is just an organized pattern of movements, choreography, just a way to disguise repetition when you're practicing strikes, moves with your cane for self-defense. Bring it across the body and back. Kata is very tra traditional in a lot of martial arts, and it's not necessary. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. But if you've been looking for a cane kata, this cane self-defense kata is for you. I made it for you because you keep asking me. You're just gonna go back and forth and bring it to one side. Building kata or pumse, that's another name for kata, the Korean name, is a simple thing. Weaving it together is what is a little bit more difficult. So you have to take into account how you move your feet, how you move your body, and we're gonna go over that today in this cane kata tutorial and demonstration. So I want you to learn this if you're interested. If you're not interested, don't learn it, but it's up to you. All right, you should be properly warmed up. We're gonna get right into it. I'm gonna move the camera. I'm gonna to try to face different ways so that you can see me from each side. First, I'm just gonna show you the basic kata for the self-defense cane. This is the Quantum Protector Dojo Training Cane. It's that first link below if you need a cane. From here, you're gonna step straight in. The reason you step in is to address the attack. Thrust into his face to stop his advance. Bring it into your shoulder, striking through his temple, back to your other shoulder, and striking through the other side of his head for self-defense. Step in so that your feet are directly under your body. Bring the cane into both hands, and first move to your right and strike with the end of the cane on the right. Look to the left, striking to the left. Look behind you over your right shoulder, thrusting into his groin, and then strike the knee. You're just turning the wrist to strike the knee. From here, turn your palm so it's facing the sky, bringing it up through his ribs. Take a step, drop it to the other hip, bring it up through the ribs on the other side, bringing it to the right side of your body, striking through the middle and striking back. When you strike through the middle from the right side, palm will face the sky. Your palm's gonna face the ground when you bring it back. Finally, bring it over your head and down on top of his head for self-defense. Step in with the left foot, bring it in in front of your body like this. Not here, but here and thrust right into his throat. Finishing move there for self-defense. Now we're gonna do the other side, but there's a transition. Your hand, your right hand is gonna slide back to the crook. As you step back with your left foot, you start to do this swinging across your body and put it into the right or the left hand and then step back in with the left foot. First motion is a thrust. From your shoulder, strike through his temple, other shoulder, temple, Bring your feet directly up under your body and blast through his face with both hands on your staff. This hard piece of wood is going to smash everything right there for self-defense. Look to the left, strike to the left, look to the right, step in, striking to the right. Look back over your left shoulder, step back with the left, into the groin. Strike the knee. From here, again, you're just turning the hand down. You're going to turn your palm under facing the sky, bring it up through his ribs, step through to the other foot, up through the ribs, bring it out to the left side, across, turn the palm over, across, behind your back, just directly under or behind your head in the center of your body, striking right through his middle. Knock him out if you can for self-defense. You're gonna bring this up, and again, I want your elbows tight to the body and the hands come in here. This is when you're strongest. You're gonna step in with the right thrust, right through his face or into his throat for self-defense. Slide the left hand back so you're on the crook. Step back with the right, start to spin across your body. The left comes under your feet. And you can do, you, it doesn't matter how many of these you do, this is gonna become your signature move. At the end, you can do two or three and drop it or you can just do one and drop it. But that's kind of, I put that in there, that's very traditional in Yaido, the art of drawing the sword, or um, Kenjutsu, some of the Kenjutsu schools, where you come up with your own move, or your own flourish, before you sheath your sword. So as you come back from here, all I wanna see is just a couple spins, and then put it down. If you wanted to move into a different kind of spin, 
It's your signature move, so you can come with it. You don't want to, just do what I'm doing. Now I'm gonna face the same direction and show the form a little bit faster. And I'm gonna to turn to the side and turn back so that hopefully it will make more sense. From here, it's in my right hand to start. You're just in a neutral ready position. Step in, this hand comes up. Thrust to the face, shoulder, shoulder. Bring it in, blast through the middle. Look first, always look when you move in a kata. Strike here, look. Strike here, look back. Strike with force, down to the knee. Swing it up, step through, swing it up. In, back, down, up, and thrust. Make sure you're intense. Why else would you do it, right? Warm up and then do stronger, faster, stronger, faster every time. From here, you're gonna bring it back. One, two, throw on the other hand, step in and thrust. Now we're just doing the op the mirror of the, other, the first side. From the shoulder down, shoulder down, bring it in, blast them. Look, go left, go right, back to the left, into the groin, to the knee, swing it up, swing it up, through, back, down on top. I have to make sure I don't bust the camera, I'm too close. Bring it up here, thrust right through his throat for self-defense. Bring it through, one, two, other hand, Drop it down with authority, with purpose, a sense of purpose. What is your purpose? To defend yourself, to smash his face for self-defense. Now, I'm gonna just face this way. To my right hand to start, I step in, thrust. Shoulder down, shoulder down, feet together, push. The crook is on the right, because I start on the right, I go right first, left second, back to the right, Striking the groin to the knee, just turning it out. Palm comes up, come tight through the body, tight on the other side, horizontal, horizontal, vertical straight down, bringing the hand up, step with this left foot, putting you closer as you thrust right through the face. Your right hand comes to the crook, turn, left foot back, right foot, into the left hand and thrust. Shoulder, shoulder, push straight through his face for self-defense. Look to the left, go to the left, look to the right. Go to the right, look back to the left, back into the groin, down, palm faces up. You get there just by turning, pull it up and through, step, pull it up and through, horizontal, horizontal, Vertical straight down, splitting his head open for self-defense. Bring this up and in, looks like this, really tight. Step with that right, thrust through his throat or his face, wherever you want to thrust, but generally in front of your body. Bring the left hand back to the crook. Turn, feet to come together, put in the right hand, go straight to the ground, facing this way. Before I do the next one, are there any general questions? I know you guys have been commenting. I haven't seen the, the chat so far, but does anybody have a question I can answer before we do it again? Just throw them up there. I'll stop and we'll take a look. It's on the right side. I'll try to give you a better angle. Let me, let me lower the camera a little bit so you can see more of my feet. Basically, the feet are just stepping forward and back. I don't want you to get too caught up on um, this stance or that stance or some kind of stance. Just think of footing. What's good footing for fighting? Good footing is when it's not too wide. If it's wide, you're slow because you have to come up. Your center of gravity has to come up before you move. So it's your feet are mostly just under your body. Just think about like the armpit. That's usually the center of your shoulder, that shoulder joint. If you go straight down, that's where your feet, that's how wide your feet should be, the middle of your arm, or your armpit, middle of your shoulders. So from here, I wish I didn't have all this stuff in the background, you can see better. Step in, thrust, from the shoulder down, other shoulder down, step in, push, look uh, right. Step to the right, look to the left, step to the left. Look behind you, straight back, strike the knee, bring it up, step in, bring it up, bring it through, bring it back, straight down on top, in, in, through the throat. Bring the hand back as you turn to, Throw it to the other hand, step and thrust. One, two, three, look left, look right, back to the left. Knee, 
bring it up, bring it up, through, back, down on top, bring it into the hands as you step in with the right, through the throat, your left hand comes back, pushing one, two, back into the right, and down. I'm gonna do it one more time from the back, and unless you have any questions or anything you wanna see specifically, one tip that you can use, if you don't know how to do this already, probably most of you do, if you go to the top, the three little dots, when you're watching this back, you can hit it and slow me down. You can go half speed, uh, three, quarter, or three quarter speed, you can go a little bit slower, a lot slower, or like really slow, but turn the volume down because it sounds funky. But if you turn the volume off, then you can watch it back and forth and try to zoom in a little bit. If you have any questions, specific questions, let me know. I'm building a curriculum. There are a few of you who would like to have a certification in cane self-defense. I'm gonna create that for you. I've done that with other weapons, with the bow staff, with the nunchucks. It's a simple certification. I don't think it's necessary unless you really want it. Um, in some countries you need it. If the attacker has a gun and you have a cane, you're in big trouble. I wanna keep it real, right? I'm gonna be honest. If um, most people, who pull out a gun, they don't stand here and say, hey man, give me your money. If they did, and you had a cane, hit him with your cane. He's either gonna shoot you or not shoot you. Most likely, if he is planning on shooting you, he'll pull out a gun and shoot you. And so, you won't have time to respond to the gun, or react to the gun. That's why if you feel like your life is in danger before the gun comes out, stick it through his face, if you can. Or smash the top of his head, knock him out if you can. If you find yourself in a movie version where the guy's got the gun and he's like, come on, man, give me the money, give me the money, give him your money, right? If he shoots you after, then, you know, you're, you're going to get shot anyway. But if, you, if he's holding there and it's just a threat, don't fight him with your cane, you're going to lose. A gun doesn't, or a cane doesn't beat a gun. Um, you can try to block it, but I, or smash it out of the hand. Hello, Christopher, good morning. It's good to see you. Other than that, if... Uh, if you sense at any time that your life is in danger and you have your cane in the position, stick it through his face. Gun or no gun, knife. Before they get the knife out and come and try to, don't try to block the knife, smash the head. All for self-defense, right? All right, so last I'm going to turn and face the back. I won't talk as much. Maybe I won't, probably will. But uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comment section below. I'll come back and I'll read the comments. If you want to reach out to me directly, if you're interested in getting certification for the cane, Go to pasquinelli.com, reach me there. Shannon, yeah, you don't bring a knife to a gunfight. <laughs> I'll keep talking. I just don't know if you can hear me with my boom mic if I'm facing that way, unless my voice is bouncing off the back wall. This is a small dojo. I'm used to a big space. But I'm getting used to this. I like this size a little bit better. For now, back in the past when I had a big martial arts school, I liked that for then. Now I wouldn't want that. That's too much, too much hassle. I had five classrooms. Now I've got one that's enough for me. All right, facing this way. Step in with the right, thrust from the shoulder. Shoulder, step up and push. Right, left, back to the right, to the knee. Turn the hand under, strike through, strike through. In, back, down. Bring it up here as you thrust into the throat. The hand comes back here. One, two, put it to the left hand. Step with the left. Thrust, shoulder, shoulder, in, push left, push right, push back. The one thing I said earlier that I want to reemphasize is always look on a kata. Look before you go in a direction. It makes more sense for somebody watching it. It tells a story. If you just turn your body at the same time, it catches them off guard. It doesn't make sense. Also, when you turn your head and look first, your brain will do the calculation and tell your body exactly where to put the foot subconsciously. So if I here and I look back, I'll go in the right position for perfect balance every time. If I step back, I'll be dropping here. So always turn your head before you move in any kata that you do. From here, turn your palm under, bring it up, bring it back, in, back, down on top, bring these in and thrust. And go back one, two, right hand and down. One thing I just realized is that as I'm doing this striking motion to here, 
Sometimes I'm showing you that I'm here and that I'm stepping with the thrust. Sometimes I'm stepping as I'm doing it. Both ways are correct. Whichever way, when you break it down and you're first learning it, you bring it up and then you take a step and thrust. That's okay because later as you become smooth, remember slow is smooth, smooth is fast. We say crawl, walk, run, take your time, allow your body. This is all disguising repetition. When I first created this form and I, I was doing these moves, I was moving about this fast. Now, as I'm doing these moves, I'm moving a lot faster. You're gonna be moving a lot faster. You're gonna be generating more power. You're gonna get balance in your body. You're gonna engage the core. You're going to um, be comfortable with timing and distance, spatial awareness. People don't always understand the purpose of a kata because like in a traditional uh, karate or taekwondo form or you know, any striking, there's, there's moves like this and they say, well, you're not gonna do that in a fight. And the reality is, yes, you're right, you're not gonna perform the kata in a fight, but by practicing these moves over and over again, you're going to develop that muscle control, speed, balance, you're gonna tighten everything up. It's almost like an isometric exercise when you do it right. The same is true here. You're not going to perform the kata in the middle of a self-defense situation, but every piece of that kata that you have to use for self-defense is going to be so much stronger. You're going to hit harder. You're going to have better balance. You're going to have great accuracy, great accuracy. And it's almost like role playing. If you were to take a job as a salesman on the phone, before they give you the phone, they give you a script and then you have to memorize the script. And then you sit down with your boss, your salesman boss, and then she'll say, all right, let's role play. You start talking, and then they interrupt. You practice, you practice, practice, practice. Role play is a kata. It's the same thing. It's a script. So this is a basic script for self-defense. Now, are there any other questions before we go? Today is the pumpkin patch day at the kids' school. So I get to go in the first about 20 minutes, and my daughter gets to pick a pumpkin, and then my son goes right at her class, goes, his class goes after. So, and it's funny, because I grew up in Ohio. In Ohio, when you go get a pumpkin, it came out of the farmer's field across the street, and there's mud all over it, and there's uh, corn stalks still everywhere. Down here, they truck them in. <laughs> Shannon, I won't repeat that. But the, um, it wasn't that bad, it wasn't that bad. The uh, big pumpkins in the field, right? But here, it's, it's you know, it's, it's in a nice neighborhood. There's a, there's a couple of Rolls Royces parked nearby. There's a Bentley or whatever. And then, you know, they have all kinds of pumpkins, different shapes and sizes, and they're all categorized, and they have little places to take pictures everywhere. So it's, it's, a, it's a posh version. Everything down here in South Florida is a posh version of the homegrown hick town that I grew up in. And it, one's not better than the other. They're simply different, right? I love that. I love that about martial arts. It can be different. It doesn't have to be the same. We all have different bodies. We're all moving completely differently. And that's, that's what creates so much value in this. As a martial arts community, when you put your comments below and you see somebody else has written something, make a comment on that. If we... If we, when, you, when you start doing that, when you start to write on someone else's comments in the comment section on all these videos, then you start to add to the conversation. It starts to become something different, something better, something bigger than all of us put together. And that's what I love about martial arts. This is a virtual dojo, self-defense dojo for today when we're doing the self-defense cane. But when you want to um, expand your knowledge and your understanding, this is what I've always been able to do. I learn more from you as a student than you learn from me as a teacher. I'm always a teacher and a student. You're always a teacher and a student. You have so many things to add value in this conversation from your life experience, which is different than mine, your body, which moves differently than mine, and at every level. You might be in a wheelchair. If you're in a wheelchair, your body moves differently, you're gonna perform this kata a little bit differently. In a wheelchair, you can still perform all the moves of the kata that we did with sitting or uh, moving with your feet. And then later, depending on your mobility level, you can add some movement with the body too. Uh, Pi Universe, do I teach staff as well? I teach on this channel, this martial arts channel, there are over 600 videos just on the bow staff. The Joe is another like 200 videos. And then the Hanbo, we've been working with the Hanbo, the uh, smallest size staff. But yes, I do, that's actually my specialty. That's my, my first love in martial arts is the staff. So just go, go to this channel, join, consider becoming a subscriber. Thank you to all my subscribers. And then you'll have access to literally over a thousand staff videos just on this channel. And then probably another, we're probably up to about 
a hundred maybe, I'm closing in on a hundred with the cane. By the way, if you want a walking cane, this is the Cane Masters Quantum Dojo practice cane, but it, you can use this as an everyday carry cane. This one's made out of oak. I would go for hickory now. The next one I get will be hickory. Just because I've been working with the hickory weapons, I really like them a little bit better than oak. Uh, but I love oak. They're either Whichever one you get is going to be great. It's very inexpensive. As, as far as value goes, if you buy a $10 Carex cane off of Amazon, which I used to promote, you're going to break that every two or three months. Some of you break it more if you're more aggressive with it in your training. This you're never going to break. You're not going to be able to break this as long as you keep oil in it and you sand it all down every once in a while. It's got nicks in it because I beat it against stuff. It's got nicks from knife because we practice against uh, you know self-defense, against different tools. But you just sand them out and then it keeps going. This is the first link below. You can also see the other things that Cane Masters sell. And if you're looking for that card that you put in your wallet, when you take it out and it says why you're allowed to carry the cane with the Americans with Disabilities Act and why they're not allowed to ask you invasive questions about your medical history with the uh, HIPAA law as it re relates to your cane. And then I have a staff. Go to that first same link, you'll find all the staffs that I sell the, the, or that I promote. They're all made for my specifications. They're all self-defense staffs, but you can use them for demonstration. You can use them for competition. They're a great staff. And the same thing. They're made out of these materials. They're handmade by a master craftsman here in South Florida who's been doing it for years. He's been making canes and staffs and other martial arts weapons for probably 50 years. I think if you, you go into the shop, you put all their collective time together, it's probably 100 years that these guys make them. And they make them in a way that, because they're all martial artists, that you would want to use. It's not any of that garbage that they bring over um, from China that's dried out red wood on the inside and they break the first time they hit the ground. And, and it's the same thing. If you, you could spend, you'll spend a little bit more for quality cane made in the United States made here and it does it's not that it's the united states it could be made anywhere it's made well handmade right it's just not mass produced garbage you get that stuff coming in from china that comes on the ships mass if you can even get it right now because most uh martial arts supply stores are sold out because they can't get anything either but um we've got a whole bunch of these so look at that first link if you're looking for cane uh collie sticks staff whatever screaming sticks that's all in there. You guys have been awesome. I'll see you a little bit later today. My goal is to do three today because I've kind of got a backlog of things that I want to work with you on. I wanted to get this one in here. I don't know if it ships in India, but if you're in India, then look for Silambam. Look for a school that teaches Silambam or um, Gak Gakta, uh, Gakti. You know, any of the, um, what is the, the Tamil, Tamil martial arts or the Gurkha martial arts. Look for those. They'll have a good source for a good, a good staff to use. But find a school and then call the school, ask the guru in India, hey, how do I get a good bow staff or a good martial arts staff? And the, the funny thing is, um, a lot of the, the, the stuff that we get from in the martial arts supply stores come from Pakistan. So, you know, they're right next door. And I know that, you know, there, there's, there's still some open trade, even though the politics might be different. But you can still get all that stuff in India. You just have to search for it a little bit harder. But take a look at that, and it depends on where you are in India. But there are, they're starting to become more and more companies that ship around India. So you should be able to find a martial arts staff. But look locally first. Support your local community. I don't care where you are. Unless you're in a communist country, then it doesn't matter because the communist bigwigs will steal all your money. Anyway, good luck. <laughs> I had to throw that in. I don't know why. I'll see you guys in a little bit. Thank you.